Hello and welcome. This uh, video tutorial is meant to help you get up and running with uh, Robot C, Robot Virtual Worlds. First thing we want to do is we want to open up Robot C, Robot Virtual Worlds. Now, there's an icon on your desktop that says Robot C RVW, and it's easy to confuse it with Robot C 4.0. So please make sure that you are opening the right program, Robot, Robot C RVW. Robot Virtual Worlds. That's the one. So go ahead and double click on it. And that'll launch the program. Click on the splash screen. Now, so this has launched Robot C Robot Virtual Worlds version. So, first thing we want to do is we want to come up to the robot menu, click on it, and then we're going to come down and where it says compile target we just want to verify that it says virtual worlds if we were to open the other program it would have uh, been it would have had physical robots selected but this is virtual worlds so that's good next we want to come down to platform type and please notice that the default platform type is vex IQ we do not want that instead we want to come down and select vex 2.0 cortex go back up to robot the robot menu go back down to platform type and make sure that natural language PLTW is selected as well okay so VEX 2.0 Cortex and natural language PLTW if those two are selected that's correct alright so next we're gonna go ahead and open up the file that we're gonna be working with uh, I've created a file and formatted it for you. It's on the comp science drive. We're going to open it up and we're going to save it to our H drive. So to do that, we go to open file and we are going to go to this PC. And please notice under network locations, we have two drives. We have our H drive and we have the comp science drive. So I want you to go inside the comp science drive. Go ahead and double click on that go inside the robotics folder double click on that and go inside automated systems folder number three double click on that and the file that you want is called student labyrinth maze challenge so go ahead and double click on that and that opens up the file now once you have the file open the very first thing you want to do is save it giving it a different name so I'm going to go to file save as now I need to tell it where to save so let's go to this PC let's go to your H drive now remember your H drive has your special student ID number 320 or whatever it happens to be okay uh, so uh, and then it says H at the end so double click on that now you should have by this time created a folder called my robotics I'm gonna go ahead and double click on that and then we're gonna change the name of this now notice that it says student dash labyrinth dash maze challenges or challenge I'm going to change this. Let's say, let's pretend my name is Bob Smith. Okay, I'm going to call this B Smith. And that's what I want you to do. The first letter of your first name and then your last name. Okay, then we'll click save. And now we have saved this to our um, ACE drive. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. So next, what we want to do is we want to come up back up to the robot menu click on it and we want to click on compile and download program click on that and what's going to happen is it's going to do its thing and it's going to open up a window for robot virtual worlds now um, you guys don't have accounts um, if you wanted to you could create an account to the CS2N but it, it's kind of a cumbersome process and you don't really need to because we're saving all our work locally or on our H drives okay so what you want to do is you want to come up to well you want to make sure that you're on the tab that says login locally uh, typically when this comes up this yellow tab is the one that's selected it looks like this so what you would want to do is go ahead and click on the blue tab where it says login locally and then come down to where it says login as guest okay now it says your progress will not be saved it won't be saved on the site but it'll be saved in your file and that's good enough so we'll click login as guest and then it brings up the robot virtual worlds interface okay so the first thing we want to do is select the robot that we're going to use so come up to robots we'll click on that 
and there are a number of different robots you can use. There's this Vex Squarebot, Vex Clawbot, Vex Swervebot, Puggybot, Mammalbot. We're going to do the Squarebot. That looks closest to the type of things that we're building. All right, so once you've selected uh, Squarebot, come up to the Movement tab, click on that. Then we're going to go down to the fourth option down, Labyrinth Challenge. Click on that. And then we're going to go down to Start Activity. Click on that. OK. Now, this brings up the Robot Virtual Worlds uh, display. And we see our robot. Now, a couple things I want to um, point out to you. Uh, over here, we, on the left-hand side, we've got uh, Click to Start Robot C Program. We've got stops the Robot C program and returns to the start of the challenge. It's sort of a reset. And then this button brings you back to the main menu back here. Then over on the right, we've got different cameras. We've got camera one, which is what we're looking at right now, sort of a follow. We've got camera two, which is sort of a bird's eye view from above. And then we've got camera three, which is starts off as a follow, but you can drag your mouse around and you can change the view if you wanted to okay so at different points you might want to use different um, camera views all right so just want to draw your attention to what we're seeing on the robot C virtual world uh, program so up here at the top you're going to uh, take note the project title maze labyrinth challenge you want to write your team members right here whoever's doing this if you're doing it solo just put your name in you want to put in the date, and you want to put in your section, what class you can, um, you are, and uh, what, what class color you are will suffice. That's good enough. All right, so task description, complete the maze, expanded pseudocode. All right, so this should look familiar because we've done some preparation exercises um, with uh, robot behaviors and pseudocode. So we should already have some experience uh, writing this out, and um, this should look familiar. Now, one thing that I added was uh, the raise robot arm. Um, and the reason why I did this is because if you look at um, this particular robot, whoops, let me find a better view. This little arm that sticks out, it can get in the way. So I've just given you the code to raise that arm up out of the way. So that'll be the first thing that it does. The rest, <clears throat> we've got our, um, and you'll see that down below. So we've got our pseudocode. We've got our pseudocode. So we know that that tells us that well, what it's going to be doing. So we know that our goal is to navigate the maze. So we know it's going to be going forward, taking a left, going forward, taking a right, going forward, taking a right, and going forward again. So that's what all this expanded pseudocode says. Now, for the time duration of each command, I have left it as x, which is a universal variable, because we don't know exactly how far you need to go. You're going to have to figure that out on your own with a little trial and error. So if I scroll down, please notice that the very first uh, command is, I've got a comment for it, and remember, two forward slashes um, indicates a one-line comment, so everything after that will not be read by the, um, the program. So what will be read is, uh, starting on line 61, is, is what will be read. So start motor, arm motor, negative 64, wait, five point, wait point 0.5 seconds. So that's the first command. So, And then I've got a comment here that talks about what it does. So it starts the arm motor in reverse at half speed. How do we know it's in reverse? That's what the negative mean, means. And how do we know it's half speed? Well, 64, half of 127, which is full speed. All right, so um, you're going to have to play with this a little bit to make sure that this gets the arm out of the way as you want it to. So I'm going to go ahead and change the view. And I'm going to hit play, and, and this should uh, execute the very first command. And that'll tell us whether it did it correctly. All right, so it raised it, but not really enough. I wanted to raise it a bit more. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to the wait command, and I'm going to I'm just going to change this. I'm going to go ahead and double this to one second. Okay. And then what I need to do in order for Robot Word Virtual Worlds to register this, well, first I'm going to save. Then I have to go to robot and I have to put in compile and download program again. Every time you make a change to your code, you're going to need to do this. You're going to do um, compile and download program. And a keyboard shortcut is F5. So if you wanted to do that, you could. So I'm going to go ahead and compile and download program. <clears throat> There's my window. 
and all right and then my next step is I'm going to restart this I'm going to look at the camera view that would give give me the best uh, vantage point of, of that code being executed and I'm going to hit play and what we're looking for is the arm to come up. Alright, that's good. That's probably out of the way. I think I'll do it uh, a little bit more. I'll do 1.5 just to make sure we get that out of the way completely. And remember I need to save it and then I need to go robot compile and download. Anytime you uh, make a change you're going to have to hit compile and download program. Keep that in mind. If it feels like your robot is not um, uh, displaying the changes you made, chances are you forgot to compile and download. So I'm going to reset this. I'm going to go to a view that it gives me, again, the best vantage point. And then I'm going to hit play. All right, that's perfect. Right out of the way. So 1.5 seconds would, it does the trick for that. All right, so our first task. At, well, our second task, I should say, is to put in some code that has this uh, robot go forward. Now, if you remember from our uh, earlier exercises, we need to go up to natural language and then um, movement. And here we have our commands. So the first straightaway, start motor. So we drag that out and start motor so we know um, from what we've done in the past that what our motor parts are so we've got uh, left motor right motor okay so I'm just gonna type in left motor and then speed it'll be 127 that's full speed and then I'm gonna drag out the next one and this will be the right motor it's important to name it the correct name after the port otherwise it won't know how to respond alright so then um, then our wait time well I could type that in or if I come down to wait right here I can drag out wait and then the wait time I'll just put an arbitrary three seconds and we'll see what that does so remember I need to save I need to robot uh, compile and download program and then I'm gonna reset this if I haven't already I'm gonna do camera 2 and then I'm gonna hit play so what it'll do when I hit play is it's gonna raise the robot arm and then it's gonna go uh, on the first straightaway and we earned a badge so now it's up to you to decide was that three seconds long enough do you want to go a little longer and then so on and then we know that the next step is to add the left turn and then and so on and so on okay I believe you know what you need to know to do this so let's see how you do